to debate the bill. Senator Stein has the floor to debate the bill. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I expect many of you know about the political battles we've had here in Wake County with our school board. Uh, every time one of the wounds in our communities begin to heal, something happens to tear it open again. Some have been caused by Republicans, some have been caused by Democrats. But at some point, we need to move forward, focus on our children, and allow the community to heal. This bill, if enacted, will simply rip the wound open, leave a scar on our county, the impact of which will be to hurt our 150,000 school children. The bill sponsor just offered two justifications for this bill. First, he's concerned that some children attend schools in districts outside the district in which the parent lives. The second is he's concerned about turnout and that if we moved it to even years, we can increase t turnout. Well, if he's concerned about the second one, you don't have to redistrict in order to move the election years. You could keep the districts the same. But let's examine the first of the justifications, because that's really the troubling one. The number of families whose students go to a school outside their district is exceptionally small. The large majority go to school within a few miles of their home. Of those children who go to school outside their district, almost all of them attend one of the county's 31 magnet schools. We have a very much acclaimed magnet program here in Wake County. The parents understand that they are intentionally sending their child away from their home. So once you've subtracted the, parent, the people who don't have kids, 70% of the county in the schools, then you subtract those whose kids are in their district, and then those who send their kids to magnet schools, you are left with an exceedingly small percentage of the population. So for this very small percentage, we are completely tearing up the school districts that are currently are in operation. I polled the current school board, school board members on this question. What do you do when you have a constituent in your district whose child attends a school outside your district? And I asked them, what do you do when a child attends a school in your district but the parents live in another member's district? I got responses from eight of nine, Democrats and Republicans. All of them unanimously said that they will respond either way. I'll quote John Tedesco, who was the Republican candidate for school superintendent of public instruction in 2012. He said in both instances, quote, I always do my best to help them and sometimes engage the board member from the other school district depending on the matter. He also says, when it comes to constituent services, I believe that most of my colleagues follow the same approach. We all do what we can to help because of the demanding piece of this role. Surely not all school board members are equally accomplished about constituent services. I expect that's true of us as well. But that's not a reason to redistrict. That's what elections are for. Let's talk a little political philosophy. Because even though this is a local bill, I know that many of you care about the proper functioning of government and respect for constitutional principles. Our state constitution discusses redistricting as it relates to the House and the Senate. Here's what it says. Districts, when established, shall remain unaltered until the return of another decennial census of the population. That means you redistrict one time in 10 years. You don't do it again until the next census. North Carolina state law, we already have a law as it relates to districting school boards. It says school boards, quote, shall not revise them, districts, again until the new federal census of population is taken. Why did the people write that into their, our Constitution? Why did our predecessors write it into the statutes? Because they recognized that repeated redistricting every time one party assumes new control of power serves only partisan political interests, not the public interest. Repeated redistricting creates confusion among the electorate and fuels partisan vengeance among elected officials. Let us not fly in the face of the people's will simply because you can. The irony of this bill is it does not even accomplish the bill sponsor's stated purpose. The bill makes it more likely rather than less that the voter will not live in the district where his or her child attends school. I want to show you some maps. I circulated them all on your desk. 
Start with this one that says Wake County Board of Education Districts, December 6, 2011. These are the current maps. They were just redrawn a year and a half ago. They were redrawn, redrawn at a cost of $40,000 to the county by Mr. Kieran Shanahan, who is currently the Secretary of Public Safety. We, Wake County was the only county in the entire state that hired a partisan official to redraw our maps. And he drew those maps. If you look at them, for the most part, they're relatively compact and respect town boundaries. They respect the traditional school relationships from elementary to middle to high school. And they did this even though they were drawn intended to protect to the maximum extent possible Republican incumbents. Let's look in contrast to Senator Hunt's maps. That's S the maps in Senate Bill 325. You all have it on your desk. They are highly irregular, substantially less geographically compact. The chances that your child will not be in the district where you live increases substantially under this map. I have a question for y'all. What does Briar Creek by the airport, Falls Lake, the town of Wake Forest, the town of Rollsville, the town of Zebulon, the town of Wendell, and the town of Garner have in common? Other than that they are all in Wake County. They have nothing in common except for the fact they're in school board district one. It's this pink district that essentially goes around two thirds of the circumference, the perimeter of our county. A number of you are probably familiar with Broughton High School in downtown and Daniels Middle School on Oberlin Street. Those two schools, brought, Daniels feeds into Broughton. They are about a mile and a half apart from each other. Under the current map, they're in the same district. Under Senator Hunt's map, they are in different school districts. So your child goes to Daniels one year and then Broughton when he graduates and now you're in a different school board member's district. These maps were drawn without any public input against the will of the school board and for transparently partisan reasons. It becomes even clearer when you look at Senator Hunt's super districts. Printed this one out, the, the Senate Bill 325, it's the, the green and pink map. This is the map where everybody is in one of these super regional districts. So you get to vote for one or the other. And committee, Senator Hunt characterized these as one urban and one rural. You notice how there's this weird crab looking part in the right half of the district? I ask all of you to look at another map that I provided. which is Senator Blue's current legislative map. If you look at this one, if you look at this map, it is exactly the same crab-like structure as can be found in Senator Hunt's map. This map, as Senator Rucho well recalls, was on the minority district map that you all circulated first, before you draw on all the other districts. This is an affirmatively race-based district. So Senator Hunt has used that as the basis of one of his super regional districts. He is racially polarizing the electorate for school board purposes. It is outrageous. Moreover, he does this with a population deviation of approximately 10% between these two districts. If you're dividing the county in half so that everybody gets to vote for one super regional district, would you not make it 50-50? Why would you create a deviation of up to 10% between those two districts unless you had a different motive in mind, which was racial and partisan in purpose? The most likely outcome of this map is that a suburban family that sends their child to a magnet will vote for two members neither of whom represent the school in which their child goes, attends. 
If Senator Hunt's justification were sincere, that he wanted people to be able to vote for two members, one of whom was in their district and one of whom represented the school in which the child lived uh, or attended, there is a dead certain way he could have achieved this without violating all these redistricting principles. He could have simply overlaid two at-large districts on top of the current map. That way, every citizen gets to vote for the one in which they live, the one and two in which two representatives who represent the school where their child attends. That's three members, potentially, who represents the school that your child attends. That proposal would have a number of benefits. It would avoid the widespread confusion that this new map will create. My goodness, who is my representative? Where is my child's school? Under Senator Hunt's map, it is practically impossible to know that. It would save the county a quarter of a million dollars to resend out voter cards by having to redistrict in the middle of the decade. But most importantly, it would allow Wake County to begin healing and focus on student achievement. Senator, Senators, this bill is wrong on many levels. This legislation is about a Republican majority in the General Assembly inserting itself into local affairs in order to exact partisan payback. This is not what we should be doing as it relates to school boards. We should be focused on the kids. I urge you to oppose this legislation.